a little misplay there allows Yushikago to get some space, and it's sent over. And I don't think anyone's really expecting that one, but just tries to line it up, sends it far right. Looked like Biddlecombe had it covered up pretty well, but there was some pace on, on that ball. Biddlecombe sends the troops forward. He's going to fire this one long. Wheaton has two very tall center backs, Justin Hill and Drew Beamer, but apart from them, who stand at about 6'2 apiece, not a whole lot of height. They're still able to control it up front. But it's, in the end, a good defensive play from Wada, who is fouled by Sapikiotis. Yeah, you'll see here both of them going in and a little shoulder dip from Sapikiotis there results in the foul. And I think with that foul, we've seen refs call that differently maybe just a, a signal that the the officials for tonight are going to recognize that this is a huge rivalry game huge marquee matchup they don't want it to get out of hand and yep just like that Moyes called for the foul after a strong move from Pino so another another not a soft foul of course there was lots of contact there but another call that maybe a different ref at a different time would have would have elected not to take. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we see more of that or maybe just more here in the first half as the officials look to set the tone. Like you said, both teams, you know, you Chicago coming off some good games, the Thunder looking to come back after the loss. Emotions running high. It'll be Jake Luker to take this, raises his hand. Nice ball in, it's low. Dealt with by Moyes. D'Argento attempts the clearance. And in the NJK, tries to get on the end of it. It'll still be a Maroons throwing deep in to Thunder territory. Tanner Baldwin right back for the Maroons on the sideline here. Looking for someone to throw to. Goes in to Rourke. In the middle, Hugh. Bobbled around, cut out smartly. Here's Martins. He can burst with pace. Down the sideline, Martins still with it. Cuts it back, and Michael Martin's electric player able to just take that up about 40 yards himself, and now Wheaton with the ball again. Yeah, we've seen Martin use his speed up the sideline so many times, both this year and in previous. He's dangerous when he gets the ball with some green space in front of him. Pino attempted the smart ball to Kyle Rourke. Nice skill there from Ben Brandt. A couple good step overs, keeps the ball in the hands of the Maroons. Here's Wada. Ball cut out by Galvao. And then sent long Wheaton. Not really able to pick up too much possession here. Of course, the Maroons unable to establish themselves in any great degree either, but I would say they have maybe a bit more possession that Wheaton has. Nice move inside, cleared away by Jacquet. And it will go out for a corner. Yeah, Don, I think, you know, chances aside, we saw that one shot, but was well wide. I think, you know, in, if we're just talking about pressure, it's it's U Chicago who's putting the pressure on the Thunder right now and the Thunder reacting to, to what the Maroons are trying to do on their side of the field. In this corner, Griffin Wada, of course, is going to go forward. Six foot five, the center back. It's a ball sent in by Luker towards the back post, and that is fired over the bar from what looked like Naz Kabani. Yeah, just a nice ball that's sent in. They go short, but then want to cross it in immediately, and coming in with that big left foot, sending it in, gets through a couple Thunder players and meets the foot of its intended target, but just goes a little high. Jack Luker, freshman from Milford, Michigan. He's already had a couple good services in. It's being utilized pretty heavily on this left wing. And we'll see him on the throw in here as the Thunder retreat. He goes quickly. Galvao putting some nice pressure in. And a great job keeping possession. Cabani now able to turn away from Sapikiotis. Gillespie under pressure finds Baldwin. Baldwin has space. Cuts inside, out on the wing. The cross is low and it's dealt with initially and finally cleared away. That's Baker Ovinger with the strong right foot. And then possession is gifted away. Wheaton can do something here. 
to Kay, back to Baker, and Wheaton will recycle through the center backs. Yeah, it looked possibly for Wheaton to, to do something with a little forward momentum, but just like that, it goes back to the Maroons after it deflects off a Thunder player out of play. The Maroons playing a very high line tonight, coming in with a lot of confidence. They're still undefeated on the season, as we said, ranked 10th in the nation. They had a pair of great victories over the weekend against number 16, Christopher Newport. They won that game 3-1 last Friday, and then they took on Luther, who was 20th on Sunday. Low shot in goes wide, but UChicago able to take pretty good care of two ranked opponents. Wheaton at 3-1 and one still has yet to play any other ranked teams. And, of course, this is the first matchup for Wheaton that really is going to test them. Of course, I know they lost to Concordia, but that was a game that they still dominated. UChicago certainly 10th in the nation, and this is going to be a very great contest. as a foul down on the wing by Pino. Yeah, a clear one there on Moyes. But he wants to get started quickly. And, you know, Moyes can take it and handle it, I think, as much as anyone on this Thunder team. Such a tough, gritty player that we've seen throughout the years just continue to, I don't know, bring the physical contact just as much as absorb any of it that comes his way. Beamer with space. The Maroons taking a bit of a rest from that relentless high pressure. Oh, Sapikiotis made a nice run into the middle. It wasn't spotted. And now Cabani can restart on the other end. Here's Hugh. Hugh tries to swing the play, but Martin's... ...sometimes, especially when it's on the far side. Michael Martins and, and Baker Ovinger, both with long hair, both with the headbands, quick players. Yeah, similar stature Sim as well. Similar stature, similar, you know, electric styles of play. Calm and collected Griffin Wada sprays one out to Pino. He's had a really nice couple minutes. And now Cabani, nice move getting past Groza. Cabani still with it. Fires one out wide. Hugh. Cross is sent in. It's one. But goes right to Biddlecombe. Yeah, and I think this is now the third, maybe second or third time that we've seen a ball kind of get through the Thunder defenders and, and meet the player that header that just kind of bounces into the hands of Biddlecombe. The other one goes high. But, you know, if there's a chance for them to get a solid, a solid foot on that one, that's, you know, a really solid chance for them. And I think, yeah, a little disconcerting early on with the ease that they've been able to win those balls inside the box. Groza hasn't been too active on the ball. Sprays one out to Baker. And it's still with Michael Groza trying to command that midfield. It looks like he's holding that, that role pretty well right now. He's back on the ball, dribbling through a couple players. But it's nicked off of him. And now Pino. Able to find his teammate, Ben Brandt. Brandt sprays one back, and this will be the first touch of the The product of Harrison High School. And that right there, it'll, it'll stay with the Thunder, but the longest amount of time that it was on the UChicago half, all game. You know, 12 minutes into this one so far, it's been almost all Maroons in terms of which half the field we've been looking at, but Thunder able to sustain a little bit more possession on that side just on this previous chance with the ball. Biddle come, he has time. As Rourke will pressure him into sending it long. And it's won by Luker. Back to Wada. Chased down by Ovinger. He has to send it deep out of bounds. It almost looked like from the curve that that was going to settle into the student section, which is appearing a little bit sparse tonight. <laughs> it's grown a little bit since the start of the game, but... Certainly not the crowd we saw at the end of the Bob Baptista a week or so ago, but we are getting some of that colder weather, and that often does have an effect on the attendance. Well, you know, the Bob Baptista Invitational is, is a once in a, you know, four, four times in a lifetime opportunity. You know, you only get one every year, and, and everyone likes to show up. 
Yeah, and these these students as well didn't have one last year too. So of course, even of course. more so. It's like a double double tournament. Thunder corner kick. We have the first corner of the night for Wheaton. They had eight corners against Concordia Chicago, the game that they lost one nothing. So hopefully for them they can be a little more productive. Maybe find the head of Justin Hill or Drew Beamer or AJ Moyes. Nice ball sent in. It's one by Cabani and now out to Rourke. Yeah, and I thought Sapiki Otis had a chance there. He came flying in, and now there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a ruckus down on the field. Yeah, that this is going to be a yellow card for AJ Moyes, who <laughs> bit rashly kicked the ball away after that foul call. There was a a wave of outrage from the Maroons bench when when he kicked that ball. AJ Moyes, number 25 of Wheaton. But of course, caution. justice has been served. The culprit has been found. Moyes has been cautioned for kicking the ball away. And now Gillespie will put it back into play for the University of Chicago. Smart ball down the wing. Yedishevsky still with it. Low cross in. It's a smart cross and has to be dealt with by Moyes, who sends it long. Yedishevsky, the player that you mentioned, Abram, has three goals on the season. The leading scorer for the Maroons with a nice cross in. Probably one of the better chances of the game for the Maroons so far, who really have seen pretty much all the possession. Pino cutting inside on his right foot. Low shot in. Biddle come there for the save. Yeah, and this is the first one. I've 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 seen so far just some really skilled players here up at front for the for the Maroons and it looks like that one even went through the legs of Drew Beamer. Uh, you know, Bill comes right there to deal with it. Not a huge challenge for him, but another open shot that the Maroons were able to take at the top of the box. Another attack from Wheaton is dealt with well by the Maroons and Wada. Hasn't had too much to do tonight. Brant over to Gillespie. A bit of pressure here from Wheaton, looking a bit more lively as Jacquet comes and tracks over. But they're going to go for the assistant referee and do the early throw to Sapikiotis, but Wada clears it away. Yeah, you know, nice to see on just that possession right there, a little bit of... You know, Thunder players swarming around, coming towards the ball, and it, it eventually wins them the ball back. They want to get going quick, of course, run it up to Sapikiotis, and he's out front there trying to make something happen. you got to appreciate the energy that he brings, and ultimately nothing comes of it, but it's little plays like that that wear the other team down or that all of a sudden you find, you know, a chance falls in your lap and you get a chance to put one in the back of the net. You know, the Thunder just need to generate those type of plays tonight. And one of those unspoken things about, Division three college soccer is that the the best teams, not always, but typically have two very tall, very strong center backs. You know, a lot of these teams sometimes can get away with with a five eleven center back, a five ten center back, but you've got the six three Gillespie and the six five Griffin Wada and Joey Sapikiotis. He's fast. He's very strong. Not the tallest, so he's going to be dealing with these aerial attacks against those two players all night. Ball cut out by Justin Hill, smartly. He goes long early. That's going to be Martins wide open on the wing. He's on sides, and he's able to keep possession. D'Argento now dealt with well. Sapikiotis back to Moyes. Moyes will put a ball in. It's low, dealt with by Gillespie, and now Cabani on the end of it. His pass doesn't get as far as Moyes, who tries to find Galval, but it's cut out. Here's Groza, D'Argento, Groza again. Wheaton with a couple passes strung together here, probably their longest consecutive possession of the night right now. Yeah, and I would say that this looks like what the game opened up with, with the University of Chicago's first possession. Oh, nice. Nice slide tackle there, D'Argento, and it actually went off of Pino, so that's going to be a Wheaton throw. Moyes. 
Long switch over to Baker. Nice heads up play, but not the best first touch and Wheaton will have to recycle through its defenders again. And then just prolong that possession even further again. You know, possession isn't the, the end all be all as we saw in the game against Concordia Chicago. The Thunder having, you know, the vast majority of possession time in that game still falling in a 1-0 loss. But uh, it does just, like we said earlier, just it creates chances. And that's what you need, especially in a game that is going to be so tightly contested between two really good teams. It's all about generating chances and, and seeing what's going to happen. Two talented goalkeepers here, of course, two talented back lines. So any chance you can get to, to challenge those things on either side, you just want to take. And so good to see the Thunder working to create those tonight. Moyes goes long to put it back into play. Jack Jacquet on the ball, a sophomore who didn't start the season in the starting lineup, but then an injury to Ryan Melgar forced him in, and he's been very excellent in that midfield role. Moyes now under pressure. And that was just really impressive to see how quickly Luker got out to defend against Moyes. And you can tell this Maroons team is very well conditioned, very well coached, just in the way that they defend. We got the foul there, it looks like. It's Martins that goes down. With a bit of a bit of flair. <laughs> it's a Picciotis, able to capture it again. And then he's fouled, and this is going to be a nice position here for Wheaton if they can get a hold of this one. Yeah, this is great. Let's see who stands over it. Likely going to be Moyes, I would assume. He's the one that's setting it down now, but, yeah, just probably 10 or so yards outside the 18. Everyone else going to congregate over on that left side, make a run towards the net. We saw Jack Jacquet take a couple of free kicks against Concordia. Moyes, though, appears to be the primary kick taker. It's sent in. It's low and dealt with immediately by Wada. And then Moyes is going to track it down out of bounds. Yeah, once again, it looks like, let's see here, yeah, Sapikiotis, who's almost got a head on it, but it's just cut away before he can get to it. Two times now that Sapikiotis has been right there, just not quite able to make contact. And Wheaton throughout this season has not been the type of team to, to look for crosses and look for a striker's head, but 6-3 and 6-5, not a great recipe for trying that at all. You still want to have the option as a coach to go high to try and win an aerial battle, but Griffin Wada has looked very strong and very calm in defense so far tonight. Brandt over to Hugh. And finally cleared away by Luker. It's a nice ball that will be corralled by the Maroons. Don, just about 20 minutes gone in this one, but the tail of the last seven, eight minutes, very different than the first 12 or 13 as we've really seen the Thunder come to life here and get some time on the ball in terms of possession and just look more aggressive. I think both teams looking really fast tonight, coming out with a lot of energy, like you said, good stamina for both sides. So haven't seen a sub yet on either side. We've got starting lineups both still out there, and both are pushing. And, and the Thunder, after getting pushed on a little bit in those first couple of minutes, look like they're starting to push back. Yeah, I definitely agree with you, Abram. We've seen a bit more of an equal game, and Wheaton historically has been a team that sometimes takes a little bit to grow into games and hopefully for them this is a good sign of things to come just the ability to hold some more possession as that's an excellent tackle from Groza D'Argento can burst away goes quickly to Martins Martins still with the ball into the box it was an excellent tackle and it had to be from Baldwin yeah I'm just waiting here as Martins works vertically 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 when's he going to cut in and ultimately it's taken away there but you know had Martins been able to round the corner that would have been such a good opportunity for the Thunder, but we'll see the corner kick anyway. Thunder, corner kick. The last corner for Wheaton was dealt with quickly by Cabani. And Wheaton's strategy here goes low. It's Jack Jacket to send it in, and the first save of the night for Calvin Walters. 
Yeah, Walters looks like he's able to handle that one pretty well, but a little misdirection there from the Thunder. Got a couple guys coming at the ball, and Chuck Hay comes in and is able to put a chance on the net, but Walters no problem with it. You know, Abram, what I was going to say before the ball was sent in low was just looking at A.J. Moyes standing there trying to take that right-footed corner, not really a whole lot of space. We have a, you know, that banister right behind him, so... Footed uh, kick taker to take a corner kick from that location. <laughs> that's that's really true. We're butt up against here the public safety building, and <laughs> you know I don't know the history as to which was built first, but it does feel like they squeeze Joe Bean in here. And we do have a net built up there, but a couple balls end up on the roof of the public safety building every season. Ooh, Walters put under pressure, so Picciotis was able to force that difficult pass. We're going to see a foul here on Justin Hill. Yeah, let's take a look at it. Hill vying for it there, and it's mainly after the contact with the ball as he just kind of – I think his head was turned the other way. I don't see that as intentional in any way, but just kind of bowls over Rourke and bodies get tangled up a little bit. It'll go against Hill, but certainly not something out of ill will that the referees are trying to deal with. Justin Hill, a second-team all-conference defender two years ago in the last full season that the Thunder played. We're going to see potentially two players on this Maroons free kick being taken 50 yards from net. It's going to be Luker. Goes low. It's one. Gets to Wada. Fires it over. Over the shot. Blocked. Cross sent in. Biddlecombe thinks about it, and it's one. The header comes in. Once again, soars well high over the bar, but uh, that one just bounced around one too many times to feel comfortable there for the Thunder. Walters. Yeah, and that's where the height comes in an advantage there as the ball bounces up in the air and Galval goes up for it and it's just snatched out. It's there's no nothing doing there with that one is Walters. Normally a player that Wheaton likes to build their offensive movements around four goals and two assists on the season really hasn't had too much to do tonight, Abram. No, we haven't really seen him uh, get involved in the action. You know, what what limited action there has been for the Thunder. Um, it's been a lot of Sapikiotis running around up top. We've seen Martins kind of streak towards the goal a couple times, but Galvao has spent a little more time back, and yeah, just hasn't been much on the offensive side so far. Oh, nearly tried to clear it away, but it was cut away very smartly. Brant now over to Yedashevsky, strong movement inside, low cross, no protest there from the U, the U Chicago bench and from Yedashevsky himself after some contact on that play. Wada goes low, deflected, Biddlecombe smartly is able to prevent the corner. Yeah, that's not what you want to happen there, but you once again just see some more space and Wada just going to tee it up and say I'll send it in. Yeah, not the best effort in the end from Wada, but he's probably be more used to heading in crosses than he is sending them in himself. Avenger, back to Jacquet. Brock Seneff, who has played most of this campaign as a left back, has moved into that Michael Groza mid midfield role. As the ball is sent wide, Galvao now on it. Galvao has it, low cross, oh, low shot in. With his left foot, oh. and it goes wide. Did Walters get a touch to it? 
is the question we're asking, and it's going to be a no. It's going to be a goal kick. Yeah, I don't think he did. Look at Galval. Wait here to be onside, take control of it, and then quickly in between two Maroons players, fire one off. And, man, that's that's not well off. That is that is a really good try. I don't think Waters got a touch. They're going to say he did not, but he was able to, to cover up at least enough. But there's Galvao getting involved for the first time tonight. Cameron Bloy and Michael Johnson have checked into the game for the Maroons. So some midfield or some ball sent up by Walters. Brandt. Nice first touch there from Bloy, who is on the ball now. Luca looks forward. The Argento back to Senef. In the end, it was a nice outside of the foot pass to Martins, and we with the chance to possess now. Jacay cleared away by Hill and controlled now by Gillespie. Yeah, you see some of the some of the new blood, some of the fresh legs coming in here and. Bringing some energy, especially at the top there for you, Chicago. Energy. Beamer goes for looking up top for D'Argento. And the ball is just being flown around. Bodies are. So. Certainly very exciting to watch, but frustrating, I'm sure, for the coaching staff of both these teams. Beamer goes long, looking for Galvao who's going to be chased down by Wada. It's Galval. Nice move. Gets it to Moyes. In space, Moyes with the cross. Goes to the top of the box, and it's cleared away by Johnson. Ah, It'll stay with the Thunder, but you wish you could have seen something more on the end of that one. Moyes now, a one-on-one -on -one chance with Bloy. Goes back to Jacquet. He'll send his lefty cross in. Tell me it went to the top of the public safety building. I called it, Abram. <laughs> That's exactly where it went. And that one is well above the net, well above the protective net, and well up onto the roof. But a couple opportunities there for the Thunder, and especially the one where they found Galvao going long, had a one-on-one -on -one against Wada. A lot of times Galvao going to be able to win that one and go past him, but Wada, a capable defender. And it was a little bit funny seeing on the replay just how quickly the shot disappeared from the frame of view of the camera. I know it was his weak foot, but that really just went almost 90 degrees into the air. Wada yeah. put under pressure. He, he, he was trying to – I think he just felt the – like you said, weak foot, but, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's well high. It would have been a highlight real goal. I mean, the ball from J.K., had a little bit of swerve to it, went right to him, and it was a good first touch, just final product. It'll come, it'll come. Michael Martins has two goals on the season from that left wing position. He started out his career as a left back, so he's moved up the wing in his progression at Wheaton. He got minutes as a freshman, too. He started a couple games, so he's been in the program. He's been a key player. He was a key player under Coach DeClute for a couple years, and now under Coach Gosling, looks like he is one of the first names on the team sheet. A nice throw in. Yeah, we're 30 minutes gone now, and I think you're sensing the urgency in both teams, having having seen no, no shots hit the back of the net thus far. Both teams wanting to be the one to break this one open. Baker's got space on the wing. Hill. Cut away, Martins. Putting Gillespie under pressure. Oh, nearly got there. Gillespie has been under pressure a couple times, but able to just dribble out. And now the Maroons on it. Sent in, looking for the head of Bloy, but in the end goes out of bounds. Yeah, nothing doing there. Uh, it's some nice footwork to, to get the space to send that one in, but ultimately no one, no one on the other end of that one, the Thunder. We'll get a chance to send it away with 13 minutes to go left in the half. 
Brock Seneff, the only change that Coach Gosling has made for the Thunder. We've seen a couple of names pulled up from the team sheet. I wonder when we'll see the likes of a Harrison Lee or Price Anderson or a Wes Bavard, who all have gotten a lot of minutes in this campaign. It'll be Wada now looking up top. Michael Johnson bursting forward against Ovinger. Does a great job putting the junior under pressure and wins his team a throw. Nice job from Ovinger, though. Keeping it a throw, not a corner. We'll see Ngobia check in. Oh. He's got, yeah, he's got to ditch that. Penny. Now he's back. He'll go over and play. Is that right back? Subbing in for Tanner Baldwin. And Baldwin was sort of absent from the game in the first 20 minutes as the play really shifted over to the left in the in the foot of Jack Luker. But I'd say over the progression of the game, he's become more involved. And now Ngobia will come in to a pretty hot zone over on that far side. Yeah, we've seen a lot of work there all night. Field. <laughs> One-handed grab there by Biddlecum. He's got to make at least one highlight reel save per game. Ooh, Galval getting a little chippy with Brant. Back into it, though. Cabani, nice skill. Gives the ball away, though. Does a little too much. And now Jacquet to Martins. Back to Ovinger. Senef sends it out to Silas. Oh, what a touch from Galval. And then Sabikiotis is cut out. But, man, sometimes Silas Galval is just able to, like his first touch, so quick. And it just like takes it in a direction you would never expect to be humanly possible. Yeah, and so often that, you know, the direction he's going is directing him, getting around a defender who's on his back or, or wherever it may be, but he never lets that touch get too far out in front of him where he loses it. He's able to keep that close to his body, just flick it whichever way he'd like to go with it. And just such a versatile player, such great skill. We just saw Wes Bavard check into the game for Jack Jacquet and then immediately slot over to the right back position. So A.J. Moyes now playing the role of a defensive midfielder as Johnson cuts inside. Ngobia now. Back to Johnson. Johnson challenged by Baker. Ngobia sends the cross in and it's dealt with. Still bobbling around and finally cleared away by the Thunder. Yep, good job there, getting that one away from trouble, especially as we get down within 10 minutes here. Obviously, both teams wanting to score and wanting to open it up, but maybe even more so not wanting to give up a goal here before half. It was a nice slide tackle. Martins challenges for it in the air. D'Argento still has it, and he goes down. Looking for the foul, doesn't get it. The Thunder still have possession here with just over nine minutes left to go in this contest. Still 0-0. Zero, zero. Bavard over to Hill. Justin Hill goes long. He spotted the run of Ovinger, but it's cut out smartly by Ngobia. We'll see. Martins put it back into play. Before it's sent back. Hill, and now Biddlecombe will get a chance to collect pretty far out of his box, and nearly, nearly cut away there by the advancing run of Ryan Shea. Yeah, you just hate to see a deflection in that case. We saw the goal from Price Anderson come off of a off of experienced goalkeeper, but it does happen. Yeah, we saw it happen, yeah. and especially you know Price Anderson taller player just <laughs> you don't expect 
sometimes the the amount of uh, amount of ground that a player can travel in that last step. Smart ball out wide. Bloy will cut in. Still with Bloy as he goes. A nice ball to Brant. Good chance here. Brant goes in. It's a free shot. And it's cleared away as Wada, who joined the attack, completely shanks that one. Yeah, definitely just, just missed or, or whiffed, but... We see Wada down now in the box. Trainer's going to take it. The fact by Galval and Wada. And again, another situation where just kind of turning the heads, both players kind of moving in the same direction. Yeah, both of these teams. Really, that was, I'd say, the best chance we've seen so far tonight that missed shot by Wada and Abram. I just want to bring it back to something you said earlier. These two teams kind of playing a little bit like they don't want to lose. You know, they're obviously great teams. U Chicago ranked. Wheaton College potentially could be ranked over the course of the season, but really playing a bit scared tonight, I'd say. Yeah, I think it's it's been interesting because the teams have, have kind of, there's been a, a swing back and forth, a pendulum swing between, you know, attacking, aggressive, and then getting pushed back on your heels when the other team's coming at you like that. And so in those moments, it's kind of felt like, uh, you know, each team has kind of had their, their time, their moment during this first half. And right now you don't want to be the one on your heels here in the final seven and a half minutes of the half because you don't want to give up that goal, of course, but you also don't want to play like you're scared of giving up that goal. It's one of the uh, things that I think goes goes to a lot of sports. You know, uh, The game is not about not losing. It's about winning normally is, is the way that you hear coaches talk about that and you think about that. But so much is important about focusing on the defensive end and in a, in a tightly contested game like this one, two great teams heading into half of that. You Chicago, obviously the, the better team in terms of ranking. Wheaton with the home field advantage. Do you think a draw would be something that either of these teams would walk away, you know, with a smiling face from? Do you think like a 0-0 or a 1-1 would be, you know, a nice result? I just have a hard hard time envisioning. I've, I've heard... <laughs> no one ever no athlete I've ever talked to be happy with a tie or with a draw um, you know I think that may on paper look better from Wheaton's side because they are I would say the underdog tonight in terms of ranking but I don't think Wheaton wants that I, I certainly don't think you should yeah I, I maybe on paper that looks better for the Thunder but I don't think you'd hear anyone on the Thunder side saying that's what they're looking for tonight yeah I think that's a good point there's a bit of a penalty shout there as Hugh was going down in the penalty, but the ref beckoned for him to get up, so didn't see anything there. It'll be Luker to put in a nice lefty cross here. Good ball in. Biddlecombe has to come in, and it was a dangerous one. It bounced right before it got to him, but he controls it well. And he's able to cover it up and pick it up on the short hop. The Thunder want to move quickly, but that one bounces out, so Picciotis not able to reach it. And just a bit of an update, Griffin Wada, who was down back into the game. So very glad that he's back in. He's been a joy to watch tonight, anchoring that Maroons defense. So it seems like all he picked up was a little bit of a knock, maybe got the wind knocked out of him, but back into the game. Moyes fires it up. Luker answers out of bounds. Just over five minutes left to go, still 0-0 in this contest. No real testing shots on goal for either side. The best chance, I'd say, for Wheaton was that Galvao outside of the box lefty. And then for the Maroons, the shot that Griffin Wada shanked. Now we're seeing Biddlecombe put under a little bit of pressure. So Picciotis can get it in stride. Moving forward. Joey goes out wide. D'Argento, nice scoop inside. Galvao now. Back to D'Argento. Tries to flick it over acrobatically. And can't quite corral that one. But that's a great example of Galvao just taking a, an incredible touch. He had one or two maybe defenders on his back. As there's going to be a foul called here, but and he's able to flick that one just up ahead to D'Argento. Incredible pass. Got called back for a foul. Moyes came in a bit late. He's got to be careful. He did get that yellow card earlier on in the game. But we saw him shaking hands with Brandt, so obviously no... Ill feelings over the two on the challenge from Moyes. 
cut inside. Johnson still with it. Nice move from Johnson. And things are getting a little bit chippy here as we've seen some players go down. Shot goes in. It's too wide, and Biddlecombe scoops it up rather than letting it go out of bounds. Nice job of Biddlecombe from scooping it up. But off the foot, this one looks dangerous, and it just it curves the wrong way for the Maroons. And, you know, coming off the left foot, it's going to just continue to head out. But had that one been moving in, that's a tough one for Biddlecombe to get to. Luckily for the Thunder, he's able to track that one down. That was freshman Ryan Shea, number 21 for the Maroons, who put that shot wide he's had a couple good minutes since coming on but now the ball is back with the Maroons midfield Moise and Brandt getting into it and Moise is again called for the foul smartly taken quickly and now Bloy coming forward Moise puts in a challenge from behind yeah and I think, think you know very very quickly things got to get a little bit more under control here especially with Moise just be aware um, especially when a lot of hands are getting involved like they just were on that last possession that, you know, the referee sees that one the wrong way, and that's a that's a second caution. Well, you also got to think he's playing in the middle now. He's going to be facing challenges. He's going to be dishing out tackles from all sides. He's not 